Hello, my name is Rory Penn and I jointly run Knight Frank's private office team. We look after private clients and family offices across residential and commercial real estate. Delighted to be joined by Flora Harley, an associate in our international research department and also deputy editor of Knight Frank's Wealth Report, which came out last month. Flora, delighted to have you with us here. We're, we're talking about private capital and its huge impact on real estate, and in particular, the London property market. But can we start with a very headline question? Why should we be interested in wealth? Well, key to understanding asset and market performance is understanding wealth, how the fortunes of the wealthy are changing around the world, and more importantly, what their attitudes are, as all of these things really influence on markets. And to understand what the attitudes are, we undertake a survey of 600 private wealth bankers and wealth advisors and family offices to really get under the crux of what they are thinking. And we've been through a, a pretty um, turbulent 12 months. What has been the impact of the pandemic on wealth creation, I suppose, over the last 12 months and for your forecasts going forward? Well, the huge amount of fiscal and monetary support that we've seen across the world in 2020 really helped to bolster asset prices. And in fact, the global ultra high net worth population, which are those with $30 million or more in net assets, grew by 2.4% to more than 520,000 individuals across the world. This is quite a substantial growth and many didn't forecast that this would happen at the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020. But what's more important is we're increasingly optimistic about the future. Over the next five years, we're predicting that the global ultra high net worth population will grow by 27%. And whilst America and North America and the US are the key dominant wealth hubs, actually Asia is the story here with 39% growth, fastest of any world region, led by places such as India, Indonesia, more than 60% growth in those countries. And in China, over the decade 2025, we are forecasting 246% growth in their ultra high net worth population. So that's a real key story here. And that 2.4% that growth over the last 12 months, how does that compare to, to previous years? Well, it's uh, around a third of the, pre of the year before where we saw 6% growth in the ultra high net worth population. So yes, it is a slowdown, but it's still, it was just so unpredictable at the beginning of 2020. But asset prices, property market performance and diversified portfolios are some of the key reasons cited by our Attitude Survey respondents on why we saw the resilience in wealth. But that's the global context. So why does this matter for London? London is a very international city. It always has been. Um, we, we're sitting in London now. We kind of live and breathe the, the property markets. London, from a commercial perspective, has always attracted a lot of overseas capital. And I think the data is showing that 53% of buyers in London on the commercial perspective are cross-border, so mm -hmm. from overseas. And on the residential side, the numbers are even higher. So if you look at the top end of the resident, residential market, um, over 70% of buyers in the last 12 months have been from overseas. Um, the year before was almost 90%. So a hugely international marketplace and the impact of private capital will continue, we think, to, to, to play a huge role in the performance of central London. And how big is private capital in commercial markets in the UK and in London? It's very hard to ascertain. So on a global perspective, in terms of if you look at, if you look at the global commercial investment marketplace, last year about 900 billion was transacted globally. About a third of that, so just under 300 billion, came from private sources. So private capital, private equity, family offices, etc. So if you translate, translate that into the London investment market, we're seeing huge levels of um, existing and future demand from private capital into London commercial. And in terms of diversity of buyers, where are they coming from? I know you said it's global and a lot of overseas, but where are some of your key buyers that you've seen in the marketplace? A really mixed bag, and that continues to evolve. The last 12 months have been um, affected by travel and the travel restrictions we've seen. The countries that have been able to get here easily or have existing family offices or investment offices in London have found it easier to deploy capital into both commercial and residential markets. So the Middle East is always a, a stronghold in terms of appetite for the London market and generally between 10 and 20% of all residential transactions are from the Middle East. We have an office in the Middle East where a lot of our clients come through. The US continues to be very strong. Mm -hmm. Asia Pacific is a growth market. You just talked about the 39% growth expected in um, the amount of ultra high net worths. A lot of that capital will continue to flow into the UK market. Um, Russia continues to still have a lot of capital focused on real estate um, and Africa is slowly evolving but isn't at the moment making a huge impact on the UK markets.